Hey everybody, uh, welcome back. Uh, latest using Emacs video. This video is about using Emacs for C++ development. Um, actually, it's really for my students and um, my students are just learning. Uh, they're in their first year of computer science um, over at Hunter College and they're just starting to work with C++ um, and starting to uh, develop their tool set. So, um, it's going to cover some of the basics. Uh, also, I haven't really done a lot of serious C++ stuff in um, a decade or so. Uh, so um, I'm just using, I use some basic tooling and if anyone has suggestions um, or corrections, if I'm using a tool incorrectly or I shouldn't be using a tool or you have some great ideas, uh, please chime in on the comments. So we're going to do uh, just a little, um, little example. We're also gonna talk about make a little bit. Um, we're going to do a, a pretty a simple example. It'll be a little contrived, and uh, the code is going to be broken down in a contrived way just to, to show the example, but um, you'll, you'll get the idea. You know, you'll, it'll make sense. So um, we're going to do something that will let us uh, figure out combinations, uh, you know, N choose K, that type of thing, uh, for, you know, that accounting type thing based on factorials and stuff uh, that, that you, um, you, know, you may have done. It's a, it, this is a subset of an assignment that the students had, so I figured it would be a good thing to do here. So even regular Emacs, so let's go to main.cpp. Um, if I do Emacs Q, um, it's going to not load the configuration file and you get some stuff, you know, you get, uh, you know, you get uh, the, the, you know, the code, uh, the syntax coloring, you know, that type of thing, but not a whole lot. Um, and I don't even have my yes, Y instead of yes. Um, but we're going to use, uh, we're going to start with my basic configuration. And if you look at the, if you've been following along this series, you know that we've installed a number of, um, of packages that help us out. And I'm going to talk a little bit, actually, let me, um, let me get rid of that. And, um, there are a number of packages that, that we've been using for other purposes that are going to help us out a lot in terms of um, C++ development. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my font, ah, that's smaller, hitting the wrong key there. Let's make the font bigger. Um, and uh, let's start with, well, some of the stuff we have, if I just have IO and tab, we get IO string. And that's because of the, um, the YA snippets package. Um, so if we go here to our configuration, you know, that basic configuration for YA snippets is giving me that snippet. It's also giving me, you know, if I just type main and hit tab, it's also giving me right there, my entire main really quickly. So whereas I don't use YA snippets for my Python coding that much, I'm finding it much more useful for C++. You know, it also works, you know, for for loops and stuff like that. So um, let me just get rid of that code for a minute. Now, another thing you'll notice is you'll notice that that's red down there. That's because I don't have my semicolon. Or if I do C out, hello world, that also gives me an error. And why does it give me an error? Because I'm not doing std colon colon. Uh, so if I do using std colon colon c out, and let's say using std standard colon end out, and notice that the red goes away, and we'll do not typing very well here. Um, and now if we come over here, put Emacs in the background, and notice I'm not exiting Emacs, um, I'll compile and I'll run. Now all of that, that red stuff when I had those little errors like end or end L there, and I, you know, that guy there, all of that's based on fly check. And again, out of the box, fly check gives me all of those checking features. So another thing that I haven't covered yet is you'll notice here that if I don't really need this, we're not using this yet. Uh, normally if I'm in Emacs, if I type control K, it gets rid of everything till the end of the line. But if I'm here, if I type control K, it only gives it to me in the parentheses. Or another cool one is let's say I have a little function and I'm here, control K gets rid of the whole thing. And that's because of uh, smart parens, which I haven't covered yet in a video because I'm still figuring it out myself, but smart parens lets me do that, and that's a really, really, really nice feature. Um, so anyway, um, what we're going to do is we're going to work on this little combination uh, thing, and so we know that, or we may not know, if we have to remember, um, that 
combination of n choose k is going to be n factorial over, um, what is it, k factorial times n minus k factorial. So that's the calculation. I'll just put it up there for our convenience. Um, so to do this, we're going to have to write some pieces. And so we're going to write factorial. And I could write it here, but um, since I'm trying to show some of the Emacs uh, C++ features, and I also ultimately want to talk about um, make in here as well, let's go to another file. Let's go to fact.cpp, and um, that'll be our fact routine. So int fact int n. And we'll just do this pretty naively, product equals one, and then four, notice I'm using the YA snippets for int i equals one, while i is less than or equal to n, i plus plus, p equals p times i, and then we'll return our product. Um, and that will be that. And if I want to compile these together, um, I'm going to somehow have to let, I can't just type here, you know, like, uh, Let's test this for int i equals 1, i is less than, I don't know, 10, i plus plus, see out, uh, let's say i, fact i. Now, if I wanted to, and no, if I wanted to compile this, I would normally go g plus plus main.cpp fact.cpp, but main doesn't know about fact, so I have to somehow tell it that, and I'll do that by creating a file called fact.h, and in here, I'll contain the prototype. Let's go to fact.cpp, and we'll include fact.h. Let's go to main.cpp, and let's also include fact.h. And now that's all good and that works. Now, the next thing I want to show you about in Emacs is I can actually compile this from within here. I could type meta x compile, and you'll see down here it says make dash k, but I can just put whatever I want to do to compile this down there, and it runs it, and that's it. And I could even run my program from within Emacs, but I'm not going to do that right now. What I am going to do is I'm going to fact, go to fact.cpp, and I'm just going to put in a little error here, nothing big. Um, uh, let's put in two errors. Okay. And of course, I'm told about this because of the, um, uh, the fly check highlighting, but let's pretend that I don't have that on or I don't notice it. If I do my meta x compile, and I can just hit enter because it remembers the last compile line, I get these errors. I get the same errors if I try to compile it over here. But if I'm in Emacs, I can type Control X and then the back tick, and it brings me to the next error. So that's IT, it's supposed to be int, and that's great. And I can do, um, let's save that. And well, the other error is right here, but let's compile again. Look that. Save it. Uh, there was our error. We'll fix that. Meta x compile. Um, and now we're good. And now we can run this. Um, so that's a really nice feature. But this feature is really meant to be used not just with typing complicated lines on their GPP, G, all these different things. Um, you'll notice that the default was make dash k. Uh, because it's meant to use to be worked uh, to be used with make to build your program. So to use make, we have to make a make file. So we'll do that, and we'll say main dot the main our actual main program is going to be based on main dot o and fact dot o, and that's going to be g plus plus dash o main main dot o fact dot o, and then uh, main dot o is going to be based on main dot c cpp, and is going to be based on anything else, I don't remember. So I can always go g++ mm main.cpp, and it actually tells me. This is a nice feature of um, g++. It'll tell you the dependencies. And so that'll just tell me that, oh, okay, I also need fact.h, and that's going to be g++ c to compile only main.cpp, and then fact.o, and I can do the same thing for fact. And that tells me that I can, I can actually just do, you know, star cpp. Um, that'll give me both of them. And fact.o is going to um, be based on fact.cpp and fact.h, g plus plus dash c, fact dot c. 
C, and let me remove A dot out, and I can type make in here, and I've got a little problem here. Um, fact dot O failed. Uh, fact dot C. Uh, this is a problem. I'm still really used to doing C programming versus C++ after so many years. So now make works. But the key here is um, let's get rid of that. And I don't even have to have that buffer up. Let's just kill this buffer. If I type meta x compile and I just go back to my make dash k, the default, and I hit that um, control x back tick, it still brings me to the error. Make dash k, everything works. So uh, really easy to do. I can compile, I can parse my errors, very much like an IDE, really, really nice features. Uh, so let's finish this off. Normally I would just put combinations in here and I actually wouldn't call this fact.cpp, I'd call it something else. But let's make another routine called combination.cpp and that will include combination.h and it'll include fact.h. Now combination.h doesn't exist yet, so let's create that. And that's just going to be int combo int, uh, let's say, n int k, just my prototype. And that should go away. I'll reload, the, revert the buffer and does it go away? Combination.h, combination.h. And let's go to int combination, int, what's my order, n, int k, and now we can compute our factorial. And that should be going away. I may have to again reload this. Let's, let's find out what our error is in here. Um, no such file. Did I misspell it? Combination, yes. There we go. Um, so I'm going to make my numerator, which is going to be numerator is equal to um, n for n factorial, that's going to be my numerator, and my denominator is going to be the factorial of k times the factorial of n minus k, and then I will return the numerator divided by the denominator. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, factorial doesn't have to change, but I will need um, I could just do a quick check, g++ combination.cpp, uh, it doesn't, I'm not getting any errors, but there's no main or no fact, that's okay, because I haven't put them together yet. I really should have done that with a dash c. Uh, but now if I do g++ dash mm star cpp, you'll notice that combination needs these guys. Um, I haven't, um, quite finished, I have to fix main, because so well, let's actually, let's fix, let's, let's fix main, main.cpp, and let's say here, let's see out combo 5.3, and let's just actually see if uh, that makes any difference, not yet, we're going to have to include combo, or combination.h, and notice here we have all our dependencies. Let's type them in. Um, combination.o, combination.o, and combination.o is based on combination.cpp and fact.h, and that's going to be g plus plus dash c combination.o.cpp. So escape x compile. Make we have an error and uh, no reference to combo, so we forgot something somewhere. Um, that's probably before. Let's go to main dot. Let's just call this combo dot combination dot h. That is called combo here. Let's go to main.cpp. I'm calling it combo here. So escape x make, whoops, escape x compile, sorry. And that's all good. And that works. I should probably put an end l in here. 
And of course, I could bind this to a key, and we're all good. So, so as you can see, we can find errors quickly. It integrates well with Make. Um, just using buffers, we got completion. We have easy editing, the cutting and the pasting. We can kill entire functions, you know, in, in one keystroke. A lot of really nice stuff. Um, but there are actually a couple other things we can do as well. Let me just see how much time this is. This is 15 minutes, so we'll go a little bit longer. Um, I just want to show you a couple of other features that I use. Um, so another feature, one that I haven't used a lot, um, but there's a search tool. called Silver Searcher, if I could spell it right. And Silver Searcher is a, um, and, I, and under, um, is kind of like a grep program on steroids and it works on projects. So if I type, let's say, grep fact in star.cpp, um, it looks all my files and looks for where fact is in all of them. But if I type ag for fact, um, it's much nicer this way. It actually goes through all the files, it highlights it, it shows the context, etc. And there's actually, within Emacs, there's a nice little, if you're using Swiper, which we have in our configuration, so if we go back to our configuration file and if we look for um, Swiper, uh, we, we've got it installed. But the cool thing here is there's something called console-ag. I haven't really used this much, so I haven't bound it to anything. And now if I look for fact, it brings up all of the fact references, and I can find them and jump to the file really quickly. Or if I type control c control o it actually brings it up in a buffer. Or oh, I want to see this in the make file. Great. I want to see this um, in the h file. That's terrific. If I want to see this in fact.cpp, a uh, really, really nice, easy way to navigate through your file. So Silver Searcher, really nice. Um, I'll see if it gets into my workflow. Um, but the other tool that I use a lot is something called, and I'm going to jump down here because I already have it installed, um, something called GG Tags. Um, and this is coming from the old C Tags, uh, which is um, a way of mapping all your functions onto all of your files. And the way this works is you'll have to install something. Um, under Linux, you'll have to install the package global, and that'll give you the program GG Tags. But the, the cool thing about this is once you've installed it, let's go back into main, um, and once you've installed the package and you look at my configuration, you get this menu, and you can do all sorts of stuff here, but the key one is find tag, meta dot. So let's say I go over to this combo routine, I can just hit meta dot, and the first time it's going to ask me what my root directory is, and it's going to ask me if I should use the C tags backend. It won't ask me this in future times because it'll already have built the database. But bang, I'm at the definition right there. And now I want to go, and I can go back and forth by changing my buffers. If I want to go to the fact routine, I can just hit Alt dot, and I'm there. So it's a really amazingly fast way of navigating around your code. So I, I very highly recommend using tags as your code base gets big. It's a really quick way to navigate. You can be on any definition. You hit a key, you get to that, you know, the code for that automatically. Now, the other one is something that I haven't really used, um, and I've heard mixed opinions about it on the, um, you know, uh, on the web, which is something called the Emacs Speed Bar. And if you bring up the Speed Bar, you'll see it's, uh, it basically just brings a little mapping of your project here. And so here's fact.cpp. You know, and it, it does a reasonable job of, of kind, you know, like I can go into main, um, you know, etc. So that that's okay. Let let me actually go into another project that I have. Um, totally different project. So this is like a project I wrote. Uh, source archives. Uh, let's say graphics projects. Graphics project three um, main. .c. It's a C program, but whatever. Um, but I did this years ago, like a two decades ago. Um, and so for example, if I type alt dot here, um, brings me to my, this is C not C++, um, or if I'm looking for something here, I don't know. Um, let's process Taurus, you know, bang, it brings us up to here. Uh, but notice I can really quickly um, navigate around this. Uh, just by, you know, alt dot, and I can get to all these definitions. But if I bring up the speed bar, I'm going to right click to bring up the menu. Let's update this. 
we are not in our directory so I guess maybe we have to do this let's uh I guess I'll have to navigate this manually, so uh, a reason not to use this. Uh, home, Zemansky, um, source, archives, graphics, graphics project. Okay, so we've got this, and so you can come into here and you can see these types of things, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a help, you know, in points.c, but what it gets even better if you, if you turn on semantic mode. And this might take a little bit of time. Let me update this. Um, might, again, it might take a wee bit of time, but um, there we go. And so now we can see, oh, in line.c, here are some variables, you know, or in main.c, here are our functions. So it actually figures out where your functions are, or in matrix.c, here are our functions. And let's go to matrix multiply, and you can jump to it pretty quickly. So it's kind of cool, but it's never found its way into my workflow. Um, but that's something else that you might want to check out. And so these are some basic um, configurations or basic tools that I like using for C++ development or development in general. Um, all my configuration is online through the series. And um, you know, for those of you who are regulars on the series, uh, please chime in with um, you know enhancements and corrections because as I said, I'm not a, a full-time C++ dev. And for everyone, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Okay, bye-bye.